What's going on, guys? It is your favorite mortgage lender, Abdel Kwame, kicking off our very, very first episode with none other than my wife, Ashley Taranza. Ashley, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, so this is, again, the very first episode of Kick It Off with the Gorilla, with yours truly. Uh, had to bring Ashley on for our very first episode. Uh, we're going to talk about a multitude of different things. Uh, work-life balance, most importantly, uh, transitioning into the business, um, and really just kind of where we think things are things are progressing, things are seeing, and how things were in the past, right? Um, so, Ashley, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, guys. I'm Ashley Duranza here, Adele's wife for 15 years. Um, it has been a fun ride. <laughs> okay. Um, now, Ashley, you're also a licensed loan officer, right? Yeah, it's been... Two years now? Yeah. Give or take. Two years. Since June. So, yeah, almost two and a half years now. Yeah. Uh, now, actually, you kind of got licensed right in the middle of COVID, yeah. right through all that fun craziness. Um, what's kind of been your stance, you know, since then? Because the market's gone through numerous different changes. What are you kind of seeing on your end? Um, a lot of our clients are having a hard time just qualifying okay what um, do you what do you think is the what are you noticing the common norm what's the issue just um credit issues super okay. low credit issues um sorry super low credit scores uh dti issues um that's pretty much it it's been the, the top two so far yeah 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 I'm not I, sure I, what I, you've seen i mean the same or not but yeah i mean um I think obviously inflation played a massive role with that. People racked up on their credit card debt. I would say like eight out of 10 clients, if not more, the reason why their scores are on their lighter side um, mainly is because of just maxed out cards, right? And then they yeah. couldn't pay it and then they get hit with late payments. Um, now what's kind of been your precedent in terms of our clients still asking the same questions um, in terms of rates and stuff like that. What's oh, absolutely. Kind of, huh? <laughs> They're always yeah. asking the number one question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are the interest rate? What is the interest rate? And then social, not social media. Well, social media, the media okay. has always been, it's a, uh, don't buy now. It's a bad time. Yeah. Like they said, and yeah. it's not true until you actually break it down and tell them. Yeah. I'm sure you love hearing my conversation. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong or it goes down low. 0.25%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So kind of shifting, shifting a little bit, uh, you know, with the topics. So we talk about, um, you know, this personification for lack of better words of, um, a work-life balance. Right. And I'm absolutely terrible at that. Um, good job. I think I've gotten better. Um, but I think what's kind of been, what's kind of been your take on that, right. When it comes to, uh, that work-life balance when it comes to that what's uh what's your personal spin on that in terms of us or just in general within general general we'll talk about us too well, as well i mean i i think we have achieved it somewhat i mean i'm very grateful that i'm a we're able to wake up and i'm able to get the kids ready and yeah. drop them off and i think that's amazing um i have a few other friends that they just do it all by themselves and you know the husband boyfriend or whatever can't do that in the morning and i'm very grateful that i have you to at least i can easily get up get ready, everybody ready and i can just go to work yeah and then you take them which is amazing. well i think we do we do a good job too right we always talk about having a that tag team right um right i go to the i go to the gym in the morning right it's kind of kind of prerequisite in my life uh, go to, you know, go to the gym in the morning and then, and then, you know, by the, by the time I come back, kids are, kids are up, they're prepped. And then, uh, Layla's usually calling me, screaming at me, which is saying, <laughs> on top of you. saying, where are you? I'm, I'm going to be late. late. We don't live that far away from the school. So Literally I'm like, don't, <laughs> like, don't Two tempt minutes. me. I'll have you bike. Um, cool. Now you, so you mentioned obviously now. Aside, aside from diving into this, because you are doing mortgages part-time, 
um, you know, what's your what's your other uh, full time job? So I uh, do the payroll for a municipality here in Ocean County. Okay. All right. Well, so you know all the uh, all the ins and outs. Yeah. All the all the deets, as <laughs> Layla calls it, right? All the deets. Um, all right, cool. And I'm sure you're probably, you guys get a lot of requests for verifications of mortgages and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't see any. I'm sorry. I promise you guys. <laughs> Check my numbers. Um, are you noticing a little bit more? Because you've been there now for a little over a year now, right? Yeah, it's actually slowed down on our end. Uh, for VOM requests? Yeah, VOM. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, industry-wide mortgage applications have been on a decline, except... The last month, Has really, the increased. last week, they've jumped up almost thirty-five percent. Right, um, and obviously, what happens when mortgage applications were going up? What was the main driving force? Interest, Interest rates. rates. Interest rates went from, dude, they touched eight point two five for a regular fixed rate mortgage no, owner occupied. Uh, so. Right now, I mean, we're looking at anywhere from. Low sevens for your conventional, high sixes for your FHA VAs. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, and listen, it opens up a huge window in terms of affordability and qualification. Yeah, that I've seen. Um, sure. It is. Um, it's fun. It's crazy. Twenty twenty four is going to be even wild, right? So you're obviously here on the first episode, oh, right? Boy. Gracing yeah. us with your presence. <laughs> Uh, but taking a couple steps back, you know, COVID, um, always reverting back to that, right? Created created a huge, huge change in the industry, right? Those um, interesting times, those long lines. Well, not for us, for realtors. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, we were we were also the ones that were stuck banging out pre approvals. So we're talking about work life balance. I mean, I would be, although I was home, right? Yeah, you would work. You would wake up I, at seven a.m. <laughs> And just shut the door until 10 p.m. Literally, PM. and and uh, <laughs> and we were still in South Hackensack at the time. Yeah. Uh, before we moved down to Ocean, and um, I mean, it was it was insanity. Um, that was every day, even in the weekends. Yeah, but believe it or not, thank God, knock on wood. Shout out, shout out to the team. Uh, we've we've passed every single year since then. Uh, you know, Aren't volume you one. Recently? Yes. Yes. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> We're number one, uh, but we did pass uh, every single year production. So, I mean, I think I think the difference too, because we are talking about the topic of work life balance. Uh, major, major difference I think was was being okay with giving up certain things. I I do not agree. I think you've streamlined a lot of things, and yeah. tech has helped you a lot unplug i guess you could say yeah i mean you know what we went through again COVID. it was so easy for for every single real estate professional lender realtor um really lender uh to to be comfortable sitting behind a computer right? that's changed as well exactly that's so changed. we're like 2020 2021 i was locked up at home right um I caught COVID once around Christmas. That was hard. Out of all the day, out of all the time. But if there was a time for me to catch COVID, it, it right would have before. been around Christmas. Yeah, because right? yeah. you sat behind again the computer. Yeah. I was locked away in the bedroom in in, in uh in South Hackensack and I ended up launching um LO Mentor, the yeah. coaching company, which now we we uh, all merged it with Got Originator. That's uh yeah, that's funny. Um, but so, so all the fellow professionals out there, right. That are married to various different, uh, real estate agents, title attorney, stuff like that. What would you give your personal words of wisdom to them in terms of, you know, accepting or being okay with, or not being okay with, or kind of related what? message? Um, just patience, communication. I mean, I'm used to, I mean, we've been together since we were 18. Yeah. And I remember, wow. um, where were you working initially? The restaurant business. And we just had Layla three years after that. And then he was started working doubles, which would be from 9 a.m. literally 
to 10 p.m. and on the weekend from 9 a.m. until one o'clock in the morning when we first started. Yeah, that's why people tell me they're like, uh, you know, how how do you how do you work like this? And I'm like, dude, I'm actually working less. I was just about to say that. That's what I kept saying. I think we've gotten better with the work well yeah. work balance um, compared to what we were 15 years ago when I wouldn't see you at all. This is actually a lot better for me because you get to create core memories with Layla, like I said, in the morning. Yeah. With Layla and uh, Jimmy. When she's screaming at me. Well, yes. <laughs> when she's, she's telling me she's late or I pick her up. <laughs> she, my daughter doesn't even say hi anymore. It's like, more where like, are you? yeah, literally. Uh, really? And and uh, my team can attest to that because we're always on Zoom or in the office. <laughs> and I go, guys, watch. She's not going to say hi. She's just going to say it in a very melatonin way. Yeah. Uh, where are you? Where? So, I'm like, hi, Dad. It's like, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. I love it. Um, all right, cool. So so work life balance. But again, what would, what do you think would be your recommendation? So you said patience. You patience. said communication. Uh, you know, anything else? Because I also think our um, relationship, right, um, also started to started to um, progress, right? Um, when you went and started to, not even about licensing, because I'm not saying every single spouse to go get licensed, but if you guys want, visit our website, gotoriginator.com. <laughs> I had to throw it in there. Yeah, I know you um, But what would you say, you know, I, I was saying, I do appreciate. When, I know what you're saying now. When <laughs> we got licensed and stuff, I think and you I understood saw what you had to go through, and who you had to deal with, and mm -hmm. um, I did. A, I do appreciate you. you guys, hear this right? <laughs> on the record, off the record, on the record, <laughs> recorded first episode. Not going to be hard to find. I did this strategically. We're in the clear. I got to be careful what I say now. I can use this in the, in the future against me. Um, I yeah, I do appreciate you. I see. I saw what you really had to go through. Yeah, because you had a couple deals die, you know, okay? <laughs> oh, wow. and around the same time. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget it. She had one deal. It was out of state. Shout out to PRMG, um, and it was in like. I don't no, Michigan, Minnesota Colorado, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Not Michigan. We have a branch of Michigan. I think it was like, it was some. some Colorado, Colorado. Yeah. A Western state. Uh, well, I'm actually having a house sold in Colorado. Oh, really? That VA deal. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, um, <clears throat> and uh, the agent was uh, very green. Right. She was a little bit of a, a little bit of a noob, which is fine. Um, and then the house, uh, did it under appraise? I believe yeah. so. Yes. Yeah. He needed like 15000 To cover it because they waived the appraisal. Right. And this was, this was, um, this was still deep in, in, into COVID or towards the end of the aftermath mm -hmm. of COVID. At, towards the end. Yeah. The end. Um, you know, people, I mean, still, people in this market still have to waive, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and in the next, this is being shot in December of 2023. Mark me, quote me, hold me to this. In the next three to six months, and probably more six months, if not before, um, you're if if you're not waiving the appraisal, right? Uh, on a house that's hot, right? On a house that's competitive, even till this day, I tell my clients, um, you got no shot, my friend, right? Yeah. Um. All right, cool. So 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 we kind of we kind of saw that. Now I think we're seeing a little bit more, a um, little bit more flexibility, right? In terms of in terms of that stuff, where we're not necessarily seeing um, people people are a little bit more understanding, right? We're like a house a house under appraised. I think the tone has changed significantly. Yeah, yeah. for sure, it yeah. has. Because um, you know when when rates were in the um, in the twos and threes uh well i'm talking about COVID. when they were like in the twos and threes um you know we were dealing here and there with i mean when we bought our house right we offered 60 over yeah and then you told me i was out of your mind and we competed i'll never forget it yeah. against two other offers 95 thousand dollars more than the house was listed for yeah. we were at 560 um, and somebody else was like 575 
Um, they ended up going with our offer. Shout out to Christina. And um, and it worked and we put it together. But I'm not going to lie. Like, I was in that driver's seat. Um, and it sucked. sucked. It did. <laughs> or I should say, I'm usually in the driver's seat in terms of the lender. Yeah. And as a client, man, I felt for you guys because, you know, our lovely guest here, uh, we started with a budget of 350 uh, <laughs> which was the purpose of moving to down the shore, right? Get something that's fairly affordable compared to what we bought in uh, 2017 in South Hackensack mm-hmm. for, for about 500 You know, we were trying to make our way down. Uh, and we ended up buying $210,000 more, so. But we, I know we got what we wanted. <laughs> exactly. Not complaining. The pool for later. Yeah, yeah. We got we got what we wanted. So um, I'm sure that was nerve wracking too, right? Because you were seeing it uh, here for a week of the huh? appraisal. Were you here? No, you weren't here. No, I was. I went. I went away. You did so that I had to go down by myself. I only saw the house once. Yeah. Literally, I didn't go to the inspection. No. I didn't go to the appraisal. I went with Christina. Uh. The loan was literally clear to close in six days. Uh, faster. Uh, well, well, it was really it was like four, but we had to wait like two days for the solar panel stuff. Oh yeah, that. I forgot that. Um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, shout out to all the professionals that made that happen because that that was that was fun. Uh, but it's funny. I mean, since then we've literally closed, you know, literally hundreds and hundreds of of transactions. Um, and I think putting putting myself in the shoes of the buyers. You know, aside from the numerous clients that we helped, Open I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure. listen, I'll be honest with you. It was, it was a life changing, um, you know, circumstance and event because remember our first house was, uh, was, was your dad's best friend. Right. And, you, uh, you know, luckily we were able to get a really, really good deal at that. And, uh, and now the house, the house has a lot of equity. Uh, but during that time, you know, we didn't deal with it. I didn't have no real estate professionals or anything like that. It was a straight FISBO. Um, we didn't even have an attorney on our side. You know, Jersey doesn't require attorneys. Um, I dealt with uh, the attorney in Teaneck. Uh, I think his name was uh, Robert Kwan, who was a cool dude. And, um, yeah, and it was, like, super, super streamlined. Yeah, and I had no idea shit. what the hell I was doing. Right, like, like, no, literally, no saying. idea. I mean, I think I, I was licensed. I was like freshly licensed. Um, you know, I knew the logistics of it, which we'll go into right now in terms of what we were doing before. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it was funny. It's it's funny how I always sit through various different podcasts, and this being our first, and like, it's like flashbacks. Oh. Scary. Right, every single time, because we only think of like, man, that dude. I got a close tomorrow. I got a shitty email from when you from go an agent. Your own. Yeah. Um. So we we're talking about before, right? So, so obviously, I even forgot the restaurant days. Oh, the restaurant days. Um, and then we had Layla at twenty one, which was wild. And um, and then remember Gallagher Steakhouse oh, in Newark, Newark, which is no longer there. Oh, remember? it's not. No, there was something oh. else that went through that whole strip. You would have to wake up at 4 o'clock? No, even earlier. You had to be there Yeah, I have to be there at 4 a.m. So I'd wake up, I think, at 2.30, 3 o'clock. You have to take the uh, bus. Take the bus in Newark. On Broad Those Street. of you guys who know Newark, not like it is now. No, we're talking, we're talking <laughs> Newark 2010? Right, be, right before we had Layla. Yeah. 2010. Yeah, yeah so 2010. And I mean, the money was great. Uh, I, I would literally do 4 a.m. to um, to 1, I think. Yeah, because we would do like the breakfast, uh, which was freaking insane, the rush. Right. 4 to 1, and then I would literally have classes starting at like 2.30 to yeah, 9. Your evening, your evening classes. Yeah, I had the evening classes, and I remember I had like one afternoon because I couldn't get more than... Uh, I think cause to be full time, you need four, mm-hmm. and I got three evening classes and then one in between, uh, and that was Rutgers, good old Rutgers, Rutgers. New York. <laughs> um, and then and then we switched to the law firm, right? We both did. So talk talk about talk about your transition because you kind of came from retail. I remember I used to have to pick you up at Macy's and you would tell me you got out at nine and um, she got out at like 1030. You would wait for me. And I'm, I know I was going to say, and I'm this the dumbass boyfriend 
that would wait and wait and i would try to walk in but you know macy's and that stuff was there a gate or something there was something yeah th the, there was a gate there was a gate right mm -hmm. so that was at garden state yeah. we lived around there uh man good times so uh so talk, talk talk about that transition obviously so you went from retail to the firm to commission then you said screw that and go. went back to um municipality which right. is kind of your 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 calling your comfort zone what was kind of your your scared uh or, or what were you feeling right jumping away when we moved down to tom's river going from working you know for for the government um to to jumping into a risk you know especially after we bought a two and done out more than we wanted uh wow i went through a lot of emotions during that time yeah <laughs> taking that big risk from going salary i guess you could say to commission um and then really seeing what you had, to, like I said before, really seeing what you had to go through. Yeah, because um, we, we ended up buying June of 21, and that's when stuff was still bananas. Yeah, well, we, we had to go and, to 60. And, you know, you were, you were doing everything solo. You had no, there was no support. There was no management. You know, we were figuring out as we went. Down here, yeah. We had we, we still don't have anyone. Down here. Yeah. It's just the four of us. Doing well, right. I'm talking about more for work. Work-wise down like, here? There, there was no... There yeah. was no management support in terms of mortgages. You know, we were figuring out as we as, went and yeah. putting systems in place um, to make it work as it was happening. Um, crazy times. So I'm glad you brought that up. So, so now moving all the way from North Jersey to South Jersey, because I'm sure a lot of us, right, for those of us who are clients or even professionals, the biggest reason we did it was – I would see what our consumers were buying up north comparatively to down south. Property taxes, systems, ambiance. Um, I mean, for me, it was a no brainer. And I'm, if anybody knows me personality, I can live out of a suitcase as long as I have got mortgages, t shirts, and a couple have. pairs of sweatpants. And I don't care if they have paint like these. Um, and I'll sit behind a computer and uh, we'll crank away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what was kind of what was kind of that that feeling, right? We went down there. We had no one. What what type of emotions were you going through? Um, it was really life changing sure. for me, work wise. You know, I went like I mentioned before. I was at that time I was working at um, Bergen County Social Service Board yep. of Social Services, and then to leave that and sort of be a stay-at-home mom which is not an easy job either no it's not no because um, because i got the brunt of it too <laughs> no, <laughs> with you. sure um and then not have uh you know i've always worked and then to stop that was hard yeah for quite some time and then pick up you know with mortgages to start out with commission job that was also a life-changing event opening eyes um changed me as well just work-wise sure trying to make up like you said systems trying to just come up with anything really at that point yeah well you ended up working at Howell for like a week and that was horrible i did work at Howell for a week. nothing wrong with Howell, but uh yeah no. it was a, it's a nice town as a violation clerk for a week. <laughs> and, um, and you you just you just always find your yourself in positions to to learn about people's uh deets. Yes, that also Mimosa, right? I always revert back to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean you yeah. helped me as well transition, you know, at the same time. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I love it uh all right so so final question any um any words of advice or anything that you think you could provide to uh, you know some of the people who are in here whether whether you're looking to uh get into the business um or looking to do various things you know kind of seeing some of the stuff that we do looking at it from an outside person in what what do you what do you think um would be would be your your top three things in terms of words of wisdom for someone who's looking to stay in the business, or actually really stay in the business, right? Yeah. The number of people that people dip. Are leaving. Um, but what do you think? What do you think your take is on that? 
first, just educate yourself, actually learn the business. <laughs> There's a lot of people out there that just copy from MBS Highway, post one thing about it, and then never post again. Sure. Um, educating, yeah, educating yourself, you can educate your client, you, you know, you build your clientele from there, uh, with the realtors as well, clientele. Uh, second one would be, um, just post a lot on Instagram. <laughs> the amount of people that came up to you, where were we this week? Atlantic City. Atlantic City. I know you from Instagram. I see your videos, or what else would they say? Um, you're the mortgage guy. You're the mortgage guy. Yeah, I'm always branding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that for sure. Uh, just go to market events. Not market events. Um, networking. Just event, networking events, I'm sorry. <laughs> networking events, uh, for sure. Put yourself out there. Um, and that's, that's about it, really, yeah. to be honest. No, I mean, listen, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, the first thing, educating yourself hyper important i would probably say one of the reasons why we've been blessed um you know this year with our success yeah. with mortgage applications being down and stuff like that um You're is still, huh your volume is still over three million so yeah I'm, yeah yeah we're, we've actually, been blessed doing that. over three a month um it it was you know i never used to care about uh well i shouldn't say care. well to be honest i didn't even freaking know about like CPI and PPI and inflation and yeah. all that stuff. I mean, I right. knew my stuff. We owned the mortgage school since 2019. So we knew, we knew, we knew, you know, mortgages, but didn't really know anything in terms of um, heavy, heavy financial data, market insight and stuff like that. Until I would say probably uh, beginning of 22, when we started noticing the market transition. Right. I would say February, March is when I was like, all right, let me actually go and listen to um, MBS Highway, Mortgage News Daily, Housing Wire and all and, and actually absorb what the hell they're saying. Yeah, right? but then you talk to your clients and educate them. Yeah. Why yeah. they should lock, why they should Oh, totally. Wait. Yeah. I think that. Um, so so definitely agree with you on that. Uh, the second and probably the most important thing, social media, um, social media, social media, social media. Social media is a microphone that just like we're going to post this right now i'm not talking to one person i can literally talk to 500 5000 plus people organically i've never paid a penny once in terms of buying followers no. you know as half the other people do you know play nice yeah professional yes, exactly what you're going to um, say <laughs> exactly um because it's all organic and and um and you never know who's watching i can't tell you guys just like you said it right we were in atlantic city a couple of days ago um people who came up to me who i know they look at my stuff because instagram tells you that on your stories and stuff uh but when you're face to face especially in that air in that ambiance mm -hmm. people are gonna come up to you yeah. right no no matter no matter whether there's uh you know heat or whatever whatever the word is so definitely agree with you on that and then the third thing and probably one of the one of the biggest things i have worked up for this year was going to networking event I, um, yeah every time yeah you've gone it's just been built a relationship exactly yeah yeah so sure. so you guys heard it best i attest to what she said um so i appreciate you guys tuning in um catch us on our next episode i'm going to be shooting them once every week uh, like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com at Got Mortgages. Follow us on Instagram. We are Kick It With The Gorilla. I appreciate you guys jumping in, and I'll catch you guys soon. Boom. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs>